All right. Good evening. Good evening to you. This is the minister M.L. Kimball coming to you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The record button going. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Okay. There we go. All right. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Now it looks like everything is going right. It looks like my computer screen is okay. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get started tonight on our study um, tonight on the uh, continue on the book of Jubilees. Now, you may not be familiar with the book of Jubilees because it's one of those books that they did take out of the scriptures for whatever reason. And nobody can show me any evidence or proof or anywhere where the Most High gave anybody any authorization to remove scripture. So what I've done for the last three years of my life is when I created these platforms, I started off by creating these platforms based upon studying of the scriptures. And I don't want you to lose focus of why I created these platforms. So I always come to you weekly with Bible studies. It was good to hear from my father-in-law today. He, he messaged me and he sent me a message and said that uh, there was a person he saw on a uh, line that reminded him of me. And it was very good to hear because I have not spoken to my father-in-law in the last couple of years. So to know that people are still watching me, supporting what I'm doing, you don't have to support me by watching every single episode. I'm not asking you for your money. All I'm asking you to do is open up the scriptures with me. Let's read it together. Now, if I, for a reason, don't got something right, you stop me. You tell me. Don't let me be the person that's telling you something that we cannot study out and verify in scripture. The scripture says, study to show yourself approved. Well, how in the world can you study to show yourself approved if all you do your entire life is walk around listening to what somebody else's philosophy is and you never open the scriptures for yourself? I need somebody to say amen. I need somebody in the back. Somebody with somebody pull out the dang on offering plate. The reality of it is we have gotten to a place where we depend on everybody else instead of opening up the scriptures ourselves. And when you open up the scriptures and develop a real relationship with the Most High, then he begins to discern and open up and make your understanding so you understand it. Not running from church to church, listening to what this preacher says and what this person says, and oh, this one's got a word from the Most High, and this one's got a word from the Most High. Where is your discernment? Why do you got to go through somebody else to hear from the Most High? What, you don't have a spiritual uh, conscience? You don't have a spiritual life? If you got to look for your understanding from the Most High through somebody else, you are spiritually weak. You heard what I said? You are spiritually weak. You are spiritually malnutrition. Because you're way basing your whole in life, entire spiritual life, off of somebody else. And I got news for you. The Bible says that the blind lead and the blind, they both fall into the ditch. So if you ain't checking out these people you listening to, you could be lost. So I'm giving you scripture, not asking you for your tithe or your offering, not asking you to give me anything in return. I give you these scriptures because we must study to show ourselves approved. And nobody can give me any proof in the scripture anywhere where the Most High gave authorization for scriptures to be removed. It cannot be shown to me anywhere. I don't care if you call it the Council of Nicaea, the Catholic Church scam, the Christian Catholic, whatever you want to call it. If you're going to take out scripture and tell me that it's not authorized or not inspired, First of all, I need to know who told you it's not inspired. Where is that in scripture? Show me in scripture where the most high said, this is inspired, but this is not inspired. You listen to this, but you don't listen to that. Nobody can do that. So if you can't do that, then you cannot convince me that we are not supposed to study even these books that they removed. 
So with that being said, looks like my partner joined me. So I'm going to join, put him in here and let, whenever he's ready. Um, but I am going to share my screen and get started right after the scriptures. So you all should see on my screen, on your screen, what I see. Okay. Uh, you should see the book of Jubilees and you should see chapter 28. That's where we're going to pick up. Verse one. And he went on his journey and came to the land of the east to Levine, the brother of Rebekah. And he was with him and served him for Rachel, his daughter, one week. And in the first year of the third week, he said unto him, give me my woman for whom I have served you seven years. Could you imagine serving somebody for seven years to get they get their daughter and they trick you and give you the ugly one? And Levon said unto Jacob, I will give you your woman. And so Levon made a feast, took Leah, his elder daughter, gave her to Jacob as a woman. So wait a minute, we gotta stop right there. Jacob was serving his father-in-law, Levan, Levan, but he thought he was getting Rachel. But the scripture says that Levan gave him uh, uh, Leah instead of Rachel. Now let's talk about this. Oh, and he gave her Zipla, his handmaid, for a handmaid, and Jacob did not know because he thought she was Rachel. So he he was he was serving his, this man for seven years because that was what it was, young fellas. You didn't just get to go get buns. You actually had to serve the father of the woman that you wanted to marry. And the father of the woman you married was the one who gave over the rights to you as the husband. You didn't just get to pick out somebody and say, oh, I want this woman. No, that woman belonged to a family, see? So I want you to understand the respect level of where it came from. You must have to come through the father. See, too many of you young brothers today don't think you have any respect. You don't feel like you've got to come through the father. No, if you want my daughter, then if out of respect for me and my daughter, you should want to come through me first so I gain your respect. Listen to me. I chased my wife for years. And you know what? It got to a place where at one point in my life, all I did was hung out with her dad. Why? Because I knew if I stayed around him as long as possible and got him to like me just a little bit, he could make sure that his wife, my mother-in-law liked me, and then it would make it easier for me to see my so uh, soon to be, hope to be, prayed to be woman. Okay, so let's understand this. But the enemy allowed the father-in-law to play a trick on Jacob. And so Jacob got Rachel instead, or got Leah, instead of Rachel. Now let's talk about this, you brothers that like a bunch of women, you brothers that want multiple wives. Let's talk about what happened next. And he went in unto her. So what does that mean? He got with her and they had sexual intercourse. This is why I want you to understand this means different in certain places in the book, but here it's described as sexual intercourse. And let me tell you why. And behold, she was Leah. So he got in there and got on top of her and said, wait a minute, who is this mud duck that I am on top of when I thought I had the beautiful Rachel? And Jacob was angry with his father-in-law, Levan, and he said unto him, why have you did this to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel and not for Leah? Why have you wronged me? Take your daughter and I will go, for you have done evil to me. For Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah. So right here is where a scam starts. Jacob wanted the sister, but he was given the older sister. But here it breaks down why he did not want Leah. 
it says, for Leah's eyes were weak. What does that mean? She was blind. She couldn't see. But her form was very handsome. So she had a body. That means she probably had a nice tail on her and some nice racks. Probably had some hips and probably looked good on the body side. But Rachel had beautiful eyes, a beautiful and very handsome form. So right here, it shows the difference between Leah and Rachel. Now, it tells us that Leah's eyes are weak. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? If it says that her body is handsome, Rachel's body is handsome, but it distinguishes the difference between Leah's eyes being weak and Rachel having beautiful eyes. So that means to me, they say that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. I believe that Leah must have been a little ugly. Leah must have had a body on her, but she was a little busted up in the face. Might have looked like somebody took a pan to her face. I don't know. But the scripture is clear there was a difference. And Levon said to Jacob, it is not so done in our country to give the younger before the elder. So now we know what the story behind Jacob and Esau. Now we see where, where we know that the story behind Jacob and Esau was a scam because he's telling her here that it is not done in our country. Well, I thought Esau was born before Jacob. So how was Jacob chosen before Esau? Because Esau did the trick and, and sold his, his birthright for the porridge. We know about this. To give the younger before the elder, and it is not right to do this, for thus it is ordained and written in the heavenly tablet. So that means, in other words, if this was me in, in this situation, and I was working for my, my wife, and my father-in-law gave me the younger one, a daughter instead of the older daughter, before the older, it would have not been righteous in our uh, uh, within our heritage. We did not do this. So he says that no one should give his younger daughter before the elder. So that's why he gave her Leah. Leah was older than Rachel. But the elder one gives first and after her the younger. And the man who does so, they set down guilt against him in heaven. And none is righteous that does this thing, for this deed is evil before Yahuwah. And command you, the children of Israel, that they do not this thing. Let them neither take nor give the younger before they have given the elder for it's very wicked. So that means I couldn't go for my younger sister-in-law. Uh-uh, the book said I would have had to have taken the elder wife first. And Levon said to Jacob, let the seven days of the feast of this one pass by and I shall give you Rachel. So now he promises him Rachel that you may serve me another seven years. So he, wait a minute, you scam. You made me serve you for seven years. You gave me the, the mud duck. And now for the one that you knew I was serving you for, you turn around and say, I got to serve you seven more years. He says that you may pasture my sheep as you did in the former week. And on the day when the seven days of the feast of Leah had passed, Levon finally gave Rachel to Jacob that he might serve him another seven years. And he gave to Rachel Bela, the sister of Zilpha, as a handmaid. And he served yet other seven years for Rachel, for Leah had been given to him for nothing. So he gave the mud duck to him for nothing, but he told him, you still going to have to serve me for Rachel. And Yahuwah opened the womb of Leah. Pay attention, y'all. They're talking about you want multiple wives. Well, I'm getting ready to bust your bubble. Yahuwah opened the womb of Leah. She conceived and bore Jacob a son. So she was automatically blessed because she was able to bear children. So understand she was a mud duck. She had a body on her. 
So she might have been a mud duck, but like I said, she might have had some junk in the trunk. Jacob went on and hit that, and he conceived a child, and he called his name Reuben on the 14th day of the ninth month in the first year of the third week. So here's your first son of Jacob of the 12 tribes. The first tribe was named Reuben. But the womb of Rachel was closed. So she was more pretty, but she couldn't have no kids. See? So here we go. You multiple wives scams that tell me I don't want multiple wives. Well, understand there is some jealousy that can be started. One woman was able to bear and the other could not. For Yahuwah saw that Leah was hated and Rachel loved. So he allowed her to bear the blessing because she was hated. Understand this, understand this, you multiple wives scams. You better make sure you know what you're doing because even here we see the strife. And instead of Rachel being blessed, Leah was blessed. And again, Jacob went in unto Leah. So he went in there and hit it again. She conceived, bore Jacob a second son. She called his name Simeon, tribe of Simeon on the 21st of the 10th month and in the third year of this week. And again, Jacob got on top of Leah again. Maybe he hit a doggy, I don't know. She can see, bore him a third son. Called his name Levi in the new moon of the first month in the sixth year of this week. And Jacob again went in unto her. She can see, bore him a fourth son. She called his name Judah on the 15th of the third month in the first year of the fourth week. And on account of all this, Rachel envied Leah. Do you understand me, you multiple wives scams? Don't you tell me it's gonna be so smooth for you. If you think you're more blessed than Jacob, then fine. But even Jacob is blessed as chosen as he was. The book says Rachel envied Leah. Why? Because she did not bear. And she said to Jacob, give me children. And Jacob said, have I withheld from you the fruits of your womb? Have I forsaken you? And when Rachel saw that Leah had born four sons to Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, she said unto him, go in. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Here comes a scam. This is exactly what Sarah did with Hagar. She gets ahead of the most high and says, go have, get, go in there with my handmaid. Go get you some from my little handmaid because she can have a child by you. I can't. She says, and she will conceive and bear a son unto me. And so she gave him Billa, her, her handmaid, to be his woman. So again, she's getting ahead of the most high. Once again, a woman making a decision and a punk jellyback man allowing her to make this decision. So he wanna, he goes on in there and goes on into her. That's if my wife said, go on and get you some buns. Well, she went on and he went on and did it. She conceived, bore him a son, and they called his name Dan, the tribe of Dan, on the ninth of the sixth month in the sixth year of the third week. And Jacob went in again unto Bela. So now he's hitting his, his side piece twice. Not even hitting his wife. He's hitting his side piece that his wife told him to hit. She conceived, bore Jacob another son. Rachel called his name Naphtali on the fifth of the seventh month in the second year of the fourth week. And when Leah saw that she had become sterile, so now she can't have no more kids. She gave all she could and did not bear. Now she starts hating Rachel. So don't tell me your multiple wife scheme is gonna work. She also gave her handmaid Zipla to Jacob to be his woman. So now Leah starts putting stuff before the most high. You see this ladies? She starts doing what she wants to do. She conceived for a son. Leah called his name Gad, even though it did not, was not born by Leah on the 12th of the eighth month, in the third year of the fourth week. And he went in again unto her. So now she conceives and bore him a second son. Not Leah's natural, but Leah still calls his name Asher. On the second of the 11th month, in the fifth year of the fourth week. 
And Jacob went in unto Leah. Now she gets pregnant. She conceives for him a son. She calls his name Issachar on the fourth of the fifth month in the fourth year of the fourth week. And she gave him to a nurse. And Jacob went in. Oh, he's getting a lot of buns again unto her. She conceived bore two children, a son and a daughter. She called the name of the son Zebulon, the name of the daughter Dinah, in the seventh of the seventh month, in the sixth year of the fourth week. We hear about Dinah later. And Yahuwah was gracious to Rachel, opened her womb. After all of this, he finally opens her womb. She conceives, bore a son, and she called his name Joseph. On the new moon of the fourth month, in the sixth year, in the fourth week. This is where Joseph brings on the children of Israel. And in the days when Joseph was born, Jacob said to Levi, give me my woman and sons. See, all of this was still in charge of the father-in-law. And let me go to my father, Isaac, and let me make a house. For I have completed the years in which I have served you for your two daughters, and I will go to the house of my father. And Levi said to Jacob, tarry with me for your wages, pastor my flock for me again, and take your wages. And they agreed with one another that he should give him as his wages those of the lambs and kids which were born black and spotted and white. These were to be his wages. And all the sheep brought forth spotted and speckled and black, variously marked. They brought forth again lambs like themselves, and all that were spotted were Jacob's, and those which were not were Levine's. And Jacob's possessions multiplied exceedingly. And he possessed oxen and sheep and asses and camels and men servants and maid servants. And Levine and his sons envied Jacob. And Levine took back his sheep from him. And he observed, uh, he observed him with evil content. Looks like my buddy joined me. How you doing, Bill? Hey, what's happening, brother? Oh, nothing much. Do you want to You kind of chime in? You got anything to say? I'm going to go right to the next chapter. You can chime out whenever you're ready, but I'm going to keep going. This is getting good to me tonight because it's bringing back some memories of stuff that I've already studied. Yeah, no, no, I don't have anything to add other than, you know, just as 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 you read, if anybody's paying attention, uh, basically he just read out the tribes and mm -hmm. Judah was one of those tribes. And that's where we get the uh, Jews from today, but that's a whole nother uh, topic of discussion. But we got to make sure that there is no distinguishment between the tribes. See, what? we've got to understand that even though Judah is mentioned, there is no Judah is more blessed here. It's every tribe is mentioned, but there's no, there's no, oh, you're better than this tribe. We've not once talked about that at all. Am I correct? You are absolutely correct. There's no indication anywhere of that uh, uh, that uh, the tribe of Judah is going to be more favored in the sight of Yahuwah than those of the tribe of Dan or the tribe of any of the sons of uh, of uh, Jacob, any of his sons. So right. there's no there's no indication that the that Judah is going to be more blessed. Nothing says that anywhere. Okay. Well, I'm going to continue with Jubilees chapter 29. This is so good to me, and it's a refresher because I've already studied this out. So <laughs> as I'm stopping and putting in my little two cents, it's because I went deep with this stuff, and I can understand it so much better now, and it feels good when I'm teaching it to people. So this is a study for me, but it's also a teaching for those that like to just chime in and watch my studies. And I do have people that actually support my studies. So we're going to continue this with chapter 29. And I'm going to pick up right here at verse one. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Jacob or Joseph, that Levon went to shear his sheep, for they were distant from him a three days journey. And Jacob saw that Levon was going to shear his sheep. And Jacob called Leah and Rachel and spoke kindly unto them that they should come with him to the land of of Canaan. So understand Canaan, understand the Canaanites, understand that Canaan represents what? The Hamites. For he told them how he had seen everything in a dream. 
even all that he had spoken unto him, that he should return to his father's house. And they said to every place, whether you go, we will go with you. And Jacob blessed the Elohim of Isaac, his father, and the Elohim of Abraham, his grandfather. And he arose and mounted his women and his children, took all his possessions, crossed the river, and came to the land of Gilad. And Jacob hid his intention from Levon and told him not. And in the seventh year of the fourth week, Jacob turned his face towards Goliath in the first month on the 21st thereof. And Levon pursued after him and overtook Jacob in the mountain of Gilad in the third month on the 13th thereof. And Yahuwah did not suffer him to injure Jacob, for he appeared to him in a dream by night, and Levon spoke to Jacob. And on the 15th of those days, Jacob made a feast for Levon and for all who came with him. And Jacob swore to Levon that day, and Levon also to Jacob, that neither should cross the mountain of Gilad to the other with evil purpose. And he made there a heap for a witness, wherefore the name of that place is called the heap of witness, after this heap. But before they used to call the land of Gilad the land of the Raphim, which represents giants. For it was the land of the Raphim, and the Raphim were born there. Raphim, whose height was 10, 9, 8, down to 7 cubits. So understand that the land of Gilad was a land to the giants. And their habitation was from the land of the children of Ammon to Mount Chermon, and the seats of their kingdom were Korathim and Ashtaroth and Edari and Mizra and beyond. And Yahuwah destroyed them because of the evil of their deeds, for they were very malignant. And the Amorites dwelt in their stead. Pay attention, the Amorites dwelt in their stead. The Amorites dwelt in their stead, wicked and sinful. So we've got to understand something when we talk about the books they removed. The Amorites, Amorites, we've got to look at who they are. According to the book of Jubilees, the Amorites, probably a patronymic from an unused name, prominence thus mountaineers. The Amorites, one of the Canaanite tribes. So when you tell me that these Amorite giants were white folks, you're out of your mind. You cannot tell me that giants were the white folks because I've heard that scam. Well, then you've got to explain to me how do we come up with Amorites that come from the land of Canaan? Canaan, which we know is the land of the Hamite. So don't tell me that. So these were black folks that were wicked and sinful. And the scripture says there is no people today which have wrought to the full all their sins. And they have no longer length of life on the earth. So this particular group of people, the book is saying the Most High destroyed them. And Jacob sent away Levon, and he departed into Aram Naharam, the land of the east. Jacob returned to the land of Gilad, and he passed over the Yabak, which is what? Jabak in the ninth month on the 11th thereof. And on that day, pay attention, Esau. Understand Esau and Jacob were both black folks. So if you're gonna tell me that these are white people, you're out of your mind. That didn't happen till years later. On that day, Esau, his brother came to him and he was reconciled to him. So these are brothers reconciling and departed from him into the land of Sire, but Jacob dwelt in the tents. And in the first year of the fifth week, in this jubilee, he crossed the Jordan, 
dwelt beyond the Jordan. He passed through the sheep from the sea of the heap unto Belshan and unto Dothan and unto the forest of Malihad Arabim. And he sent to his father Isaac of all his substance. Listen to me, young people. I don't care if you don't like it. The Bible says to take care of your parents. The Bible says to honor your father and your mother so that your days might be prolonged on this earth. It does not mean I just say I love you. The Bible says that he sent to his father Isaac of all of his substance. Not the preacher, not the pastor, not the church. His father. Clothing, food. He was taking care of his father in his old age. Drink, milk, the same way his father took care of him in his young age. Butter, cheese, some dates of the valley. And to his mother, Rebecca, also four times a year, between the times of the months, between plowing and reaping, between autumn and rain season, between winter and spring, to the Tower of Abraham. So he gave all to his mother and his father. Understand that. You scams that want to put more stock in your scamified Mother's Day and forget Father's Day. You have a responsibility to honor your mother and your father. First commandment with promise. For Isaac had returned from the well of the oath, gone up the tower of the fa his father Abraham, dwelt there apart from his son Esau. For in the days when Jacob went to Aram Noharim, Esau, pay attention, took to himself a woman, Malchaleth, the daughter of Ishmael. Pay attention. And he gathered together all the flocks of his father and his woman went up, dwelt on Mount Sire, left Isaac his father, at the well of the oath alone. So the number one thing that Esau right here did was he took and he broke the rule by getting with a woman that was not of his same nationality. He got with a daughter of Ishmael. Pay attention. The Ishmaelites became the Muslims. So there is a difference between a Muslim and somebody saying they are worshiping the Most Ayah. And Isaac went up from the well of the oath and dwelt in the tower of Abraham, his father, on the mountains of Hebron. And thither Jacob sent all that he had. He did send to his father and his mother from time to time all they needed. And they blessed Jacob with all their heart and with all their soul. Oh, my goodness, Bill, this is so good to me. Do you have any comments? No, just getting back to the idea of uh, the cubits. Uh... You know, it said that it was 10 cubits down to seven cubits. Um, a, a cubit is like one and a half feet. So seven cubits is seven. And then seven times a half, which is another three and a half feet, making that one person at the lowest end, 10 and a half feet tall to as tall as 15 feet tall. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 10 cubits is uh, 15 feet tall. So that was, at one point, the land of the giants, the land of Gilad. Yeah, and who knows? I mean, uh, um, there's some other, th there's some other th uh, interesting things about giants. Like, there might have even been a time where things were a lot bigger than what we think they are. Mm -hmm. So, for, for example, looking at some of these uh, mountain ranges, that the way that they're shaped and what they look like, when you get an aerial view of them and you start looking at them the right way, they actually look like a tree trunk. They actually look like a tree trunk that has been chopped down, a massive tree trunk now, versus just a mountain range. Well, I mean, it, 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 it was really something that we should think about that is believable. If we're going to sit back and believe the Tyrannosaurus Rex walked this earth, because it, think about it. What they taught us in school was the Tyrannosaurus Rex was one of the biggest animals that ever lived. How could he live if the, if the world did not have, at one point, something big enough that could combat him? 
Sure. They're saying they've got proof of that this thing lived before, whether they want to call it a Tyrannosaurus or we want to call it the Leviathan, whatever you want to say it is, if they got evidence of a dinosaur, there should be evidence and proof that we should realize that at one point there was giants that did walk this earth. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to go ahead with this chapter, and then I'm going to conclude this study unless you have something to say, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it up right here. Oh, chapter, no. Go right ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Jubilees chapter 30, verse 1. And in the first year of the sixth week, he went up to Shalem, Salem, to the east of Shechem in peace in the fourth month. And there they carried off Dinah. So here's what happened to Jacob's daughter. I want you to understand that something happened to her, and this is where it's disclosed. It's disclosed very soft in your King James Version, but we got to realize something happened, and it's disclosed here. They carried off Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, into the house of Shechem, okay? The son of Shamor, the Horite, the prince of the land. So this is a different nationality of people. If we look at the uh, where it says Shivite here, according to this, that is a Shivi Hivite, Hivite, uh, not Horite, but a Hivite. So it was a one of the a Canaanite. So understand that she is a daughter of Jacob, who was a Shemite, who was taken advantage of by a Hamite. Understand this. It's important to know these groups. So he was the prince of the land. An African Hamite was the prince of the land. And what did he do? He laid with her and defiled her. So defiled means that he raped her. He sexually advanced her. He built Cosby her. He did something against her will. She was a little girl. So don't you give me it's okay to mess with a child. Don't you give me it's okay to mess with a kid. I don't give a damn what they did back in the 40s. This says a child of 12 years. So anything under 12 years at this point was a child. And he besought his father and her brothers that she might be given to him as a woman. So after he took advantage of her, he went to the daddy and said, can I have her as my wife? And Jacob and his sons were wroth because of the men of Shechem. For they knew that they had defiled their sister. They spoke to them with evil intent and dealt deceitfully with them and beguiled them. And Simeon and Levi came unexpectedly to Shechem and executed judgment on all the men of Shechem and killed all the men whom they found in it and left not a single one remaining in it. They killed all in torments because they had dishonored their sister Dinah. So don't you tell me, man, you can take advantage of a woman. I don't care if she's your wife. I don't care what you thought. You don't get to take advantage of her. And thus let it not again be done from henceforth that a daughter of Israel be defiled. Uh-oh, a daughter of Israel. When I say daughter of Israel, understand, I do not mean just heritage. I mean anybody that obeys his commandment is part of Israel, according to scripture. So that means you can't take advantage of no woman. White, black, Mexican, I don't give a damn. For judgment is ordained in heaven against them that should destroy with the sword all the men of the Shechem because they wrought shame in Israel. And Yahuwah delivered them into the hands of the sons of Jacob that they might exterminate them with the sword, execute judgment upon them, and that it might not thus again be done in Israel that a virgin of Israel should be defiled. And if there is any man who wishes in Israel to give his daughter or his sister to any man who is of the seed of the other nations, he shall surely die. So at this point, you were not allowed to mix. They shall stone him with stones. 
for he has wrought shame in Israel and they shall burn the woman with fire because she had dishonored the name of the house of her father and she shall be rooted out of Israel. So you Judean, Judean women out here saying, oh, I don't, I'm done with brothers. All I want is the other nation. Well, look what they did to you back then. And let not an adulteress, let's talk about an adulteress. An adulterer is any man that cheats on his wife. That means any wife that he has. But an adulteress is any woman that cheats on her husband. Because women were not permitted to have multiple husbands. Understand me. So it's talking about a specific person here. This is a woman who has slept with somebody else that is not her husband. He says, and no uncleanness be found in Israel throughout all the days of the generation of the earth. For Israel is holy unto Yahuwah, and every man who has defiled it shall surely die. So he gives a promise to you women that's out here cheating on your husbands. You call yourself a follower of the Most High, woe unto you. They shall stone him with stones. For thus it has been ordained, written in the heavenly tablets regarding all the seed of Israel. He who defiles it shall surely die, and he shall be stoned with stones. And to this Torah, there is no limit of days. So you telling me it doesn't apply no more? Fool. No remission, nor any atonement. For the man who has defiled his daughter shall be rooted out in the midst of all Israel. So you touching on your kids? Oh my goodness, because he has given his seed to Malek. Do you understand who Malek is? Let me click on Malek for some of y'all way in the back. The chief deity of the Ammonites. So understand this was a different God that you worshiped if you defiled your daughter and wrought impiously so as to defile it. Now, remember, this is the Most High talking to Moses. So he says, and do you, Moses, command the children of Israel, exhort them not to give their daughters to the other nations, not to take for their sons any of the daughters of the other nations. For this is abominable before Yahuwah. For this reason, I have written for you in the words of the Torah all the deeds of the Shechem, which they wrought against Dinah, and how the sons of Jacob spoke, saying, we will not give our daughter to a man who is uncircumcised, for that was a reproach unto us. And it is a reproach to Israel, to those who live, and to those that take the daughters of the other nations, for this is unclean and abominable to Israel. For Israel will not be free from his uncleanliness if it has a woman of the daughters of the other nations or has given any of its daughters to a man who is of any of the other nations. For there will be a plague upon plague, a curse upon curse, and every judgment and plague and curse will come if he do this thing, or hide his eyes from those who commit uncleanliness. So those, that's you preachers that want to turn your eye away from sin. He says, if you commit, you hide your eyes from it. You don't get to turn your way, your eye away from sin. Those who defile the sanctuary of Yahuwah, those who profane his holy name, then will the whole nation together be judged. The whole nation. This don't separate Hebrew from Israelite, from Judah, from I. It says the whole nation. Together be judged for the all the uncleanliness and profane nation of this man. And there will be no respect of persons, no consideration of persons, no receiving at his hands of first fruit. So he don't want your tithes and your offering, you scan. And offerings and ascending smoke offerings and fat, nor the fragrance of your sweet savor. So keep your stinking ass cologne off because he don't care. So as to accept it, and so fair every man or woman in Israel who defiles the sanctuary. So putting on all your stinking ass cologne and perfume going to church, he don't care. 
For this reason, I have commanded you saying, testify this testimony to Israel. See how the Shechem fared and their sons, how they were delivered into the hands of the two sons of Jacob. They killed them under tortures and it was reckoned unto them for righteousness. And it is written down to them for righteousness. So all of you slave owners from back in the day that mistreated the children of Israel, oh, there's judgment coming for you. The scripture says it was reckoned in the heavens. And the seed of Levi was chosen for the priesthood to be the Levites, that they might minister before Yahuwah as we continually and that Levite and his sons may be blessed forever. For he was zealous to execute righteousness. Why did he execute righteousness? Because he went and he killed them folks that mistreated his sister. And judgment and vengeance on all those who arose against Israel. And so they inscribe as a testimony in his favor on the heavenly tablets, blessing and righteousness before the Elohim of all. And we remember the righteousness which the man fulfilled during his life at all periods of the year until a thousand generations that they will record it. And it will come to him and to his descendants after him. So again, what you do affects those coming after you. And he has been recorded on the heavenly tablets as a friend and a righteous man. All this account I have written for you and have commanded you to say to the children of Israel. So he's talking to Moses and says, this is a commandment that they should not commit sin, nor transgress the ordinances, nor break the covenant, which has been ordained for them. But they should fulfill it, record it as friends. So when you obey him and you fulfill what he said, you are recorded as his friend. But if they transgress and work uncleanliness in every way, they will be recorded on the heavenly tablets as adversaries. So stop blaming it on the devil. You are the most high's adversary. You are the reason your life ain't working out. You are the blame. It's not the devil. You can't obey him, so you are his adversary and they will be destroyed out of the sephir of life. They will be recorded in the sephir of those who will be destroyed and with those who will be rooted out of the earth. And on the day when the sons of Jacob killed Shechem, a writing was recorded in their favor in heaven that they had executed. My friend Bill, do you have any comments, thoughts? I saw you either looking in your phone or looking up information do you want to close us out? Because I do want to hear something. I talked the whole entire time. Now I want you to close us out. Because you are, we are live on my platform, <laughs> on YouTube. So everybody on my YouTube platform is seeing you and I talking right now. They're probably wondering, why is he not saying anything? Because I talked the entire time. Now it's your turn. No, I was actually looking up, uh, we were looking up uh, Malek. And he was... Uh... I was looking at what those uh, the what those people were the ammonium or whatever how you however you pronounce it it just seems like it was one of the uh, 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 one of the tribes of the giants is what okay. those people were and that's 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 what I was trying to find out is who they were what they mean it, it's it's he's mentioned in Enoch and uh, a couple other places too so now um, what, now now then we read though that when Solomon was impregnating all those women because we know that there's no way he couldn't have, unless somebody could show me in scripture where there was some type of birth control, some kind of a spiritual condom they was using back then. How did he have 700 wives and 300 concubines and not have any children? So we don't hear about Solomon's children. Why? Because if we read all through the Old Testament, we find that he was giving his children in worship to Malek. They were giving their babies in the fire, remember? So if we look at that, that would signify today's women's choice when you tell me that it's okay to abort a baby. You don't 
don't have that right. Because when you do that, according to the scripture, you are worshiping Malek. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, murdering of children is is certainly a uh, uh, a sacrificial practice of of worshiping Malek. That's whether, right. Whether whether you know it or not, whether you intend for it to be so or not, that is a sacrificial practice. That's right. And so when we got a law that says, "Oh, it's up to the woman," no, it ain't, because there are people that have tried for years to get pregnant and they can't get pregnant because it's not up to the woman. And you know, here here in America, uh, well, the United States, I think it was uh, the mid eighteen hundreds. The Christmas tree was introduced to to everybody, and it started to catch on and become a thing. And that is actually a practice in worshiping uh, Nimrod. Isn't that who it is, Nimrod? It, it is Nimrod. Now, listen, I've got a confession to make to you guys. I don't mind being honest and opening up about myself as an open book. Now, the other day, I just told my friend that I miss Christmas. I do. I miss Christmas. Anybody that knows Marquise Kimball knows that my entire life, my favorite holiday has always been Christmas. It's not about the Christmas tree. It's about the season and the family and the lights and all of that stuff. But when I look at the background and the history of it, I cannot sit back here and worship the Most High and justify worshiping what I know was the worship to Nimrod. That Christmas tree was actually penis worship. Study it out. It was called phallus worship. And so what they did was they worshiped a Christmas tree and it was in in, in, in return of fertility. So they danced around the Christmas tree as a worship to this phallus symbol and the balls became the testicles. Study me out. And so when you find this out, how can you still worship the most high and still celebrate the paganism? It's nothing wrong with getting you with your family. It's nothing wrong with having a meal. But to dress it up and call it a pagan day, just like tomorrow, half of the country will be celebrating Mother's Day. You know why tomorrow's not a good day for me? Because my mother's no longer here for me. I can't celebrate her. So don't give me that Mother's Day is of the most high. When you study it out, you see that Mother's Day was worshiped to a female goddess, not the most high. Your birthday was worshiped to a demon, not you. Easter was worshiped to a damn fertility rabbit, not the most high. And we already know the 4th of July had nothing to do with you, especially when I was still a slave when you said we were free. I'm sorry to rip down your holidays, but Bill, you started it. Hey, man, <laughs> I just wanted to let you know you asked me to talk. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. But when you start with, I, okay, listen, I'm done. I'm quiet. Bill, go ahead. I'm so sorry. But you know how it is. I just, I didn't mean that. Go ahead and finish. I'm so sorry. Y'all forgive me, but you know, I got to chime in. He was talking about Christmas and it took me there. So I No, it's all that. right. It's all right, brother. Go ahead, Bill. <laughs> go ahead. Because we actually got people watching us on YouTube right now. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just in these practices that were actually practices at that time used for worshiping false gods. And we don't even know that that's uh, uh, a practice that we're doing, you know, decorating a tree. It's it's written. It's an abomination to do something like that, to be decorating up a tree. And and Christmas was um, uh, it was a, a worship of the summer of the winter solstice, a changing of the season. And. This is when a bunch of babies were sacrificed and uh, sacrificed under Nimrod. This is Odenheim, all, all of that stuff. And then you go back to Ishtar, which is nine months prior to the summer solstice or to the winter solstice. 
And that was the big great orgy that took place. Hence the reason why you have the rabbit and you have the eggs. The eggs is a symbol of fertility. And the rabbit, you know, you've heard the term, you know, uh, uh, screwing like rabbits, so to speak. And that is where the great orgies took place in, in celebration of the goddess of fertility for these babies to be born, to be sacrificed to this god. So it just kind of gives you a little history on how the two pagan holidays uh, tie together and they've made it a belief system for us uh, and a faith that they, uh, you know, call Christianity while they got us trying to worship a man. That's just really insane when you think about it all. Now, and I've got a, a real serious question to ask you that it's really been on my mind the last few days. And I don't know if you can answer it for me, but when I ask this question to you, it's going to make a lot of sense because I don't think we are even supposed to be following the so-called Jewish calendar. Let me explain. Now, how can we, believers of the Most High, follow after a calendar of people that we know are declared the synagogue of Satan, if we're going to say Revelation, or if we're going to say Isaiah, the Gentiles stumping down the nation. They have a calendar that we claim is our calendar. My question is, how can we follow a Jewish calendar if the Jewish people are not following the most high. How can you say in one breath they are the children or the synagogue of Satan or the uh, Gentiles stumping down the nation or the other nation or whatever you want to call them? But yet you tell me that we are supposed to follow their calendar. I need somebody to explain that. Can you please give me your thoughts on that, Mister uh, Mister Mister uh, Philosopher? I I I because I, this is I'm struggling with this. Okay. So I don't for, know. If we're first of all, to... who's okay. who's they that say you to follow the calendar? Who who's they? Well, think about it. When we started waking up to this truth, when realizing that Christmas and every other holiday is a scam. We wanted to start to look at what are we really supposed to celebrate? Okay, okay. And everything that we looked up that we are quote unquote supposed to celebrate is so called Jewish. Now, if the scripture identifies these ish people as false, then wouldn't their calendar and anything attached to them? be opposite of the most high yah um i mean i mean i mean not necessarily i mean maybe they're trying to you know keep the keep the truth in disguise so to speak you know it's all a big show obviously the uh um but i guess for the purpose of personal if you were wanting to keep the feasts at the appointed time you know to be able to uh uh, celebrate, you know, Yah and his, uh, um, you know, accompl accomplishments that he has, uh, you know, wrought with man over the years. You know, though I think there's like seven of them that that he talks about, isn't there? Seven of them. Yes, but let me get let me let me bring it to you like this, then, Bill. Okay. I almost lost my train of thought. Let me give you this. Give it to you this way. Okay. If the Jewish calendar says that we're supposed to celebrate the feast of Yahuwah. Let's give that as an example. Feast of the fruits on a certain day. This is what they have in their Jewish calendar. We have just read in Jubilees that it was prophesied that they would change the order of the seasons. They would make the years 
365 days a year when it was ordained to be 364 days a year and never to be changed. We read this. Now, if they did that, then how would their calendar be accurate on the day that they claim we're supposed to be celebrating? How can we even follow their calendar? Because it's got to be a scam if we are going to receive in the book of Jubilees that Moses was prophesied to by the Most High that somewhere along the lines, some scam was going to come along and change the years from 364 to 365. Ever since I was a kid, I was told that it, a calendar year is 365, except on the leap years where we get 366. Either one of them is opposite of what the Most High ordained. So any day you give me on that 365 day calendar has got to be a scam. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, I'll, I'll tell you where I get confused on the calendar. So so pay attention to this, okay? Uh-huh. If we go by 364 day versus 365 day, then we're we're losing a day. Mm -hmm. And and think of doing that one day every year for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that take and shove like what June weather would be? Wouldn't that be happening in May? And Absolutely. then another 30 years, May weather would be happening in April, be, uh, you know, after another 30 years and so on and so forth so, because of that loss of a day. So that that's kind of where I get a little confused at and how 365 days using that calendar, you know, kind of seems to work and it keeps a consistency of what seasons would be. But if you were to take 364 days for 30 years, it would completely change and you would be you would be in a in a month uh um back you know I, so and, and that's have... where and i think I, I agree with you i understand exactly what you're saying and what i'm saying to you is i think that is what they did because think about it bill just cuz they told us winter is winter does not mean winter is winter if we're going to receive every other thing that they gave us was a lie, who's to say winter is really from the time that they say it is? It's awful funny how the last few winters we ain't seen a drop of snow, maybe one or two. What I'm saying is if we're going to believe that the Most High said it was ordained and written in heavenly tablets never to be changed, and somebody changed it somewhere, then there's no way that act that calendar or our seasons for that matter are accurate. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if it feels like it's summer. That's the reason why it feels like it's summer in the spring. That's why we come in the fall and sometimes it feels like winter because they told us that it's the season, but it could not be if the book of Jubilees is telling us by prophecy, they were going to change the time, change the year, change the holidays, and change the seasons. And we would go on to worshiping another God and, and, and worshiping other holidays that mean nothing to the Most High. Yeah, I, yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of uh, strangeness and, and confusion to go along with it, you know, and the, the whole thing with the... Uh, you know, you get winter and summer solstice, you know, the, and then you have the fall and the spring equinox. And, and really all it is, is where the earth is located as it's going around the sun at that time. So as it makes its way one fourth around the sun, it goes from a equinox to a solstice and then from a solstice to an equinox, another fourth, then another fourth is back to a solstice again or whatever the case may be so um that's really all that those mean is the angle of the earth is changing in relation to the sun so like on the the summer solstice is supposed to be the longest day of the year that's where we're getting the the most sun and then after that day 
the days start getting shorter. And then the equinox is the halfway point between the longest day and the shortest day. And the shortest day is your solstice. And after the solstice is over, the days start getting longer. Until but, how, you get... how, but how can we believe that? How do we know that that's true? Just because they said that? Um, I mean, you would, you would be... I mean, You'd measure it in the, in the amount of sunlight that you're receiving for that day. So you would see that, you know, the the sun may set at 8.30 tonight, and tomorrow it's going to set at 8.32, and then at 8.34, and you keep track of it that way because the days are getting longer right now as we're moving towards the summer solstice, which is, you but, know, June 21st or 22nd or whatever. And but, here's, be the but here's the proof that that's got to be a scam, Bill. Have you ever heard that the late, the darkest part of the night is midnight? The darkest part of any night is midnight. Have you ever heard that that statement before? Uh, no, no, and that's certainly not true. I've heard that statement. I've heard that the darkest part of the night is maybe it's midnight. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's midnight or one o'clock in the morning. But between those two hours, I've heard that in my forty years of living, that they say that at the darkest part of the night is either 12, 1, or 2. That's what I thought I heard. Now, well, when you get into like 1 or 2, now we're talking. But okay. the, dark, the darkest part is going to be the halfway point between sunset and sunrise. So, so, put a sun time, so throw, throw a time on it, Bill. So if sunsets at 9 o'clock at night, and then we got a sunrise at 6 o'clock in the morning, so halfway between that would be what one o'clock in the morning or one thirty ish would be okay. about the darkest part of the night. Now here's where that falls apart. I have worked third shift jobs. You have worked third shift jobs at points in your life. You've been outside throughout times of the night. I'm sure you've been camping. I've been camping with my family and the children and the wonderful, beautiful outside doors. And I will promise you that there has been times where it's three o'clock in the morning and it's more darker than any part of the night. Here's the proof. I drove my family back from Florida. I can tell you that it got ridiculous at 3 a.m. versus 1 a.m. So I can't even believe that is true. And if I don't believe that's true, that means the time is off. Midnight, well, maybe so. not really midnight. But think about it this way. At 3 a.m., there's less uh, light pollution going on because there's less people driving on the road and everything I, like that. I don't, not going through the highways. Not when you're on major highways. On major highways, those highways are lit up just like they. Matter of fact, they're lit up even more to prevent accidents. Maybe on some dark side roads, it's dark. But on your major highways, wherever you go, it is light as it is at 5 o'clock at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's so When you hit the mountains, it ain't. Not the mountain. Not the mountains or side streets or none of that stuff. I'm talking about your main highways. There's, there's, it, it's, it's more lighting on that highway than it is on any other street. Okay. You're more safe because there ain't no cars out there. But I've been in those situations, and I promise you, it's more darker at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes than it is at 1. So I don't even know if I can believe that midnight is really midnight. How do they get to every year play with this, uh, 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 what is it called, you spring the clocks back? Who said that? Where is that in scripture? The most I said they would play with the time like this. So you don't think springing back and falling forward or whatever the scam is, is part of the scam that the most I said we would do? Yeah, I don't know. Not everybody does it. So like Indiana I, doesn't do it. But we do it. So yeah, who Ohio does it. Yeah, all of, since I was born in Ohio, every year, during the fall, you're going to tell me that we're going to fall back. And during the spring, you're going to tell me we're going to spring forward. Where's that in scripture? No, I, I, I understand. So I have an issue with that. 
So I don't know if I can receive even the Jewish calendar. I think we got to dig a little deeper. And just because they say we're supposed to observe on this day, that may not necessarily be the day that we should be observing. We as believers, true believers of the Most High Yah, I believe we got to go deeper. Because just because they say they are the people and they're following the Most High, you can't be if he told us that you're going to change the days, the seasons, the calendars, the months, the years. Yeah, that part, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's a big one there, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Well, but, I mean, that's what we do. We read it and yep. we study. It. And if we yep. cannot come to an agreement with it, what we got to agree with something. If we agree what we've read is true, then every single day they've given us, season, time, is all a scam. Just because we think it's 5 a.m., it's not 5 a.m. to the most high. Just because we think it's winter time. It's not wintertime to the Most High, especially if the angels control the seasons. We already know Christmas is a scam. They told us that this so-called Jesus was born on Christmas. How? We've already dethroned that. That don't make no sense. And then they centered this scamified day around what's supposed to be his birthday. Although we ain't supposed to celebrate birthdays. And if Even history's correct, his birth date would have been roughly in July or August. That's right. And even if history was correct, they didn't have a birthday party. No, the only didn't. person in the scripture that had a birthday party was the pagan king Herod. And you know how he celebrated his birthday? He told the servants to cut off John the Baptist's head for his daughter, if I'm going to receive the New Testament scam. Yep, yep, for his, uh, that, that was his wife's daughter. His wife's daughter. Yep. So, 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 so it was a paganized celebration, and he's the only one that's recorded in Scripture to have celebrated a birthday. And think about this for, for everybody that is a believer of Christianity. I'm not trying to sit here and knock what you believe or anything like that. Tell me, because it's written in the New Testament, that you would go forth, you'd cast out devils, you would heal those that are sick of so many different types of diseases. I want to see one person that literally, honestly, that wasn't a scam, that had cerebral palsy and was cured by the touch of somebody because of their faith. I also want to see when somebody is in church after they're taken into the special room to be taught how to do baby talk after they got saved or whatever. Uh, I want to see the fire that comes and rests upon you like cloven tongues of fire resting upon you because that's what it says. If I don't see no cloven tongues of fire resting upon you, then that's that's a scam. It, the whole that's dang... Right. The, the whole thing, prove Listen. any of it without without just saying, "Oh, I'm accepting it by faith." Prove it, prove any of it, because he said that you would go forth and you would do signs in my name for those that they would believe. You would they would be signs as to the truth. And how's come we're not seeing those signs of the truth? Why why are we not seeing these miracles, like literal true miracles, happening? That's all I want to know. Well, well, you know what, Bill? I will tell my audience right now that he is the person that is responsible for me wanting to study out the gift of tongues because he called it a while back baby talk, and I somewhat got offended by it. I did in the beginning because I has been brought up in church my entire life I thought that you were not spiritual unless you had cut our both shot. He cut it all. Hey, glory. 
I didn't believe that I was spiritually uh, in tune unless I did any of that. In fact, when I got saved, so-called, that's what they did to me. They put us in a room and they kept you in there until you supposedly started speaking. And then you were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, when I studied out Acts 2, 38, Acts the second chapter, which is the chapter that they love to pull on when it comes to, tax, uh, to, to tongues. I've been apostolic. I know. You love to pull on Acts 2, 238, where he said, repent and be baptized, all you, and, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that day of Pentecost when the cloven tongues fell. When I read, like Bill just said, that in that chapter, it says that there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire. So I've got a problem with you if you don't, if you're speaking to me in tongues and you didn't see no cloven uh, tongues of fire. And wait a minute, you better not be the only one that sees it. Everybody in the room better see it. We all got to see it. Because the scripture said we all were in the room. They were in the room. They all were filled. So all you that's standing up in church speaking in this baby talk, talking about you are filled with the spirit, you are filled with the spirit of Baal. You are a scam, just like he said. And it thanks to him, it was Bill that brought that. I had to, I never believed that until Bill was the one to show that to me. Hey, so listen, I'm 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 not saying you're a scam. I'm not saying that at all. I didn't say anybody is a scam. You said that. What I'm saying is you get what happens is we get caught up in the emotional experience that's involved with it. Our believe it or not, our soul desires to be one with who created us there's no doubt about that whatsoever and we try to find the answer in certain things and if it makes us feel good emotionally we run with it sometimes we don't think about the logic that that comes with it i mean if we were made in his likeness in his image let's go about with the likeness part you've been given a brain you know you use it it doesn't take too much thinking to take in uh um make sense of this stuff okay this this book wasn't written in a in a special code or anything like that. You know, there's just a lot of practices that happen within the belief system that just, I don't know, just doesn't make sense. And, and why we do them and why we um, uh, follow them. The only thing I can think of is just an emotional experience and, and, and it's different behaviors. It's like, it's like um, literally the white culture and church can be pretty consistent across the board when it comes to the Catholics. Know, make sense. The 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 uh culture with the uh with the white Baptists pretty consistent across the board. Black churches, the same thing, pretty consistent across the board. Different behaviors because of different culture. Uh the same with the uh, Latinos, different behaviors, different cultures. They do do we just do different things within our churches. And and tell me how that even makes sense. Like, why would the be why would it be different among black people than it would be white people, or different among Latinos than it would be anybody else? Does the spirit like operate different because it hops in a different color or something? I mean, just well, think about that. It's not consistent. Well, we know it doesn't operate. Like I told somebody the other day, this is where I have an issue with Hebrew Israelites that want to separate white from black. Here's why it's a scam. Because if I laid your body down next to mine and somebody cut my body open just like your body, I'm not going to find inside your body you don't have two lungs, you don't have a heart, you don't have blood. You've got the same thing inside of you as me. So if I am created in his image and likeness, how can I say because your skin is lighter than mine 
that you are not created in his image and likeness. So when we say the different emotional, no, the most high said man was created in his image and likeness. And unless you are telling me you are not a man, then you and I were both created in his image and in likeness. And so yes. when the Hebrew Israelites want to separate and say, oh, the blacks, no, the blacks got treated the way they got treated because they could not obey the most high. He told them that you're going to go into bondage. You're going to be treated like this. Your kids will be uh, uh, sold off. Your women would be plundered. And we did not listen. And so what did he allow to come to pass? He allowed the same man that he created like us to come over us and enlarge us and take over us. But that doesn't mean that you're more blessed than the white person that obeys his commandments. Yeah, there's not like a uh, percentage of melanin rule that's written in the uh, you know, in the book, you know, right. I, 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 half of these guys, if they go do their DNA, they're going to find out that they are not 100% melanated. That's you right. Know what I'm saying, I know and, I, ain't. and, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent unmelanated. That's you right. Know? I, I've, I, I, you saw my DNA test. Yep. So, so what is it going to be your visual? That's going to make a decision on who's who. That's what I'm saying. The, the idiocracy of of some of the some of these people out there on both sides of the of, of the fence you know and now going back on what you said when i called tongues a scam let me clarify that and walk through that one more time when i call it a scam let me explain that to you all when i was brought up in the church like i said if you wanted to make anything sound spiritual I don't care if you're singing a song or you're preaching a message. To put that spirituality on it, throw in that tongue. Now, if because you don't want to be honest, don't mean I'm not going to be honest. I've been in church my entire life, and I've seen people take advantage of what is called tongues. When you want to make something sound spiritual, Hey, cut up shot. If I'm going to creep on, if I'm going to prophesy to you, the most high said you are going to be blessed. He cut out of she. It makes me sound spiritual. It makes you believe me more because I'm getting into your emotion. And because they have mistaught tongues. Everybody thinks that this is a sign from the Most High. When you don't even know that that person that you allow to speak these tongues around you could be involved in witchcraft. And instead of speaking spiritual and praying for you, they are praying on you. P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. And you wonder why nothing's working out in your life. Because you got all these folks with this baby talk speaking over your life. If you yep. are a man, you are the priest of your home, and you don't need nobody to lay hands on your home. And, and, and oh, let me throw this in there. I got to throw this in there. And instead of them helping you out and telling you, uh, 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 well, instead of helping you out, they're telling you that you're going to be blessed. You're He's going to take care of your light bill. It's going to get taken care of for you. Just stay strong and pray. The church that you've been given to, the church that you've been volunteering to, this is the church that's telling you that he's going to make a way. But there already is a way. It's the church. The church that's could right. help you. They could that's take right. the money that's needed and give it to you to help you. But see, they do like what... uh uh uh, uh uh, Paul said, good old Paul, when he wrote and he said, you know, um, be a uh, love not in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Like mm -hmm. you can't just tell somebody that.
doesn't have something you know you're hungry you're go cold you know what go forth you're gonna you're gonna be filled your your belly's gonna get full and and somehow you're gonna be receive warmth go forth and 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 be blessed no 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 you had an opportunity to fill their belly you had an opportunity to put clothing upon their back that is what is being emphasized in that particular thing there so those those preachers standing up there telling you that they're going to pray for you and and you've been scam scam and, and, yes and then let's not forget that just because somebody prays for you doesn't mean things are going to work out because you got to take a look at your life now i noticed that when i was just not going to obey the most high on every level Nothing worked out for me. Nothing. Everything I did, just going back on what you said, when you want to see somebody pray a, a, a disease up off somebody. At one point in my life, I was a Christianized preacher, and you couldn't tell me nothing about the name Jesus. And when I was called at 2 o'clock in the morning, by the heart of my life, my grandmother when she was dying of cancer, to come over her house because nobody else in the family she felt was worthy to lay hands on her and pray. She felt like if nobody else in the family could reach Jesus, it would be her grandson. I got up, I rushed over there. It was one of her bad nights where she was in a lot of pain. It pains me to think about it. And I was crying out. If I didn't speak in my baby language that day, I sure enough smoke, smoke into it that night. I was crying out. I can remember I was ringing with sweat on my knees. My grandmother was praying with me, begging for more, more time, asking the most high for more life. She kept saying, I don't want to leave my family. And you know what? She still left. So until you can show me that this so-called Jesus that went down here and woke up Lazarus, who was supposedly dead for four days after they took out the blood out of his body, who supposedly laid hands on Jairus' daughter after she was dead and said, wake up, then don't you tell me that the Most High's words are not true that you are going to live and you are going to die. And we are all appointed to our own time. And nobody knows when your time is up. So you can pray to Jesus all you want. If your judgment is HIV because you spent your life having unprotected sex, then your consequence may be death by AIDS. And that's what we must understand. So you can let people pray for you all day long. The scripture says he don't even hear your prayers if you are not obeying him. And obeying him is not just the Ten Commandments. So when you realize the importance of obedience, then you cannot be bamboozled by somebody saying that the Most High is going to bless you. Because if he's going to bless me, then you better give me a word that I better stop sinning to. See, today we hear the blessing, but we don't hear the correction. We don't hear, oh, he's going to bless you with a new car, hmm. but you need to learn how to pay your car note that you own the car you got. We don't hear he's going to bless you with a new wife but you need to understand how you ruined your last marriage. We hear he gonna bless you with a big bank account, but we don't hear you were a terrible steward over what he blessed you with in the beginning. So understand that prayer only works if you're willing to put the obedience behind it. And just, just just one more thing. Could you imagine if you had the ability to go back in time? Let's just say the whole thing with casting out demons and all of that stuff. But let's just say you was to go back <laughs> 2,200 years or however long it was. 
and you look at somebody possessed with the devil and you say, in the name of Jesus, the demon's going to look at you like, who? That's right. Who? That's right. Because if my savior is Yahuwah, and the scripture says that I am Yahuwah, and beside me there is no savior. I, I think I what you're missing is the name change. The, oh, the, I the, did. The, yeah, oh, that yeah. it's a scam. It, it would have been a scam then anyway, because we already know there was no J. That's right. So how can you cast out a demon with a name that did not exist? Because they did not pronounce a J. That's why they can't cast them out today, because they're That's doing right. it. That's <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's exactly right. right. They can't right. cast out demons today. The church has no power today. You can't call nothing out of your life today because you are calling on a false deity. Sure. You better realize the scripture says, I am Yahuwah. That is my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Then he says, I am Yahuwah. And beside me, there is no savior. Unless you can tell me where he rewrote that, don't you give me nothing else. Yep, the only place you can find that is in the New Testament. That's right, and who called it new? And yeah. when was the old, who said call the, 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 the Tanakh old? They did that so they could give you something else. You better wake up and smell the coffee. Don't be lost, especially in these last days. Listen, I really want to appreciate you today. I know you. we went longer than anticipated, but when I get on these lives, I have audiences watching me. So I get on here based upon me feeding to people that may not know me. That's all right. So I, so I apologize we went longer, but I thank you for your input. And I really, really want to appreciate you for sharing with me tonight on this study. Nope, it was fun. Thank you, brother. All right. Uh, okay, Royal Street, please like, share, comment. Don't forget to subscribe. I want to thank you all that joined me. And please don't forget to tune in next time because I'm going to continue this study probably later on tonight. Be blessed. Until next time. All right.